o'clock. The doors are open. Welcome to watch me work. Welcome to watch me work. Hey, it's, uh, what is today? Is it the 23rd of September? I think so. Did everybody sing that Earth, Wind, and Fire song the other day? I didn't, but a lot of people <laughs> called me to sing it to me. Um, we've been doing Watchmen work for 15 years. Uh, for like 15 years, we've been gathering and uh, talking shop. And uh, I've been uh, talking with you about your work and your creative process. And when the pandemic hit and lockdown hit, we moved online. We have been embraced and loved by HowlRound all these years and by new work development at the public theater for all these years. And we just appreciate their help in bringing us to you, bringing us together, I should say. We're gonna do what we always do. We're gonna work for 20 minutes together, air quotes. Okay. And then we're going to, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open it up. You're gonna ask me some questions about your work and your creative process. And I will do my best to give out some answers. And so, Zoe, in the New York's development department, do we any introductions, anything you want to say, explain, clarify? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe Kim. I'm with the New York development team at The Public. Welcome to another wonderful session of Watch Me Work. First things first, I would love to introduce our new um, fellow, Hannah, who is joining us um, as of today. Hannah is wonderful, already crushing it um, in every aspect of everything. And um, <laughs> Hannah will be part of our community for the next uh, six months or so. Oh, so Robert. please give her a warm welcome. And as SLP um, shared with you already, we will go ahead and start with a 20 minute war uh, silent work session where we will all go and do our own thing. When we come back, we'll go ahead and start taking questions. And in order to ask your question, please go ahead and use the raise your hand function um, in the bottom of your Zoom screen so that we can get a nice cue going. And from there, um, in the order of questions received, I will call on your name and ask you to mute and uh, we'll, we'll Try to get to as many questions as possible. Perfection. Okay. Here we go.
All right. That was 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. So um yeah, if anybody has any questions? Yes, if anybody have any questions, please go ahead and use your raise your hand function so we can get a nice cue going. Very demure, very mindful, very cutesy cue of questions. Good words, always. All right. <laughs> Don't be shy. You can do it. You can also be shy. All right, Marianne, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Sorry, I was I was hitting the clap applause button instead of the raise hand button. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. That's the sound of two hands. You were raising <laughs> two hands clapping instead of the one hand clapping. Very cool. Hi. <laughs> Hi, thanks for being here, Susan. Hi, everybody. Um, my question right now is what is the, well, what would work in your opinion? I don't know. What, if there's something that you want to add to your piece, but you're, it's a situation, a culture, a, an experience that's outside of my own, who do I seek and do I need to seek out information and opinions from people who may have been a part of that culture or experience mm -hmm. or how much can I rely on my experience and imagination? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great, that's a great question. And a lot of times we do create things, write things, songs, plays, movies, whatever, novels about people who are just like us. And sometimes we write things about people who are obviously not, you know, very clearly not like us. And we're not as how we identify or however you say it, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, hmm, it depends. For example, if you were writing um, a novel about people who lived in the 1800s, you know, that's which is 1800s in a culture that you currently live in. That is, in a way, a different culture. Yeah. Right. So what you're going to do some research, right? Yeah, or are you just going to channel them and but you want to kind of get a flavor right a flavor of uh of the vibe and i think it's similar with when you're writing things about people who are your chronological contemporaries but perhaps living in you know not your neighborhood so to speak right <laughs> not immediate culture and a culture that you identify with or feel familiar enough with to say hey i've lived with uh the students of nyu for you know 10 years and while I'm not a student of NYU I feel like I can make the leap and write a, about a story involving students of NYU for example right yeah um but so I would I would say sure do some research um talk to people who are you know part of that culture that makes does that does that make sense you know like yeah. um um, and be very mindful if you're writing in a culture that you just th think like, this is not my culture. If you say that about yourself, this is not my culture, and you're writing about that, just be mindful of all the pitfalls and the traps. Right. Um, you know? Yeah. Uh, just be super mindful and um, really, you know, hopefully you have some friends or people who can, you know, give you honest feedback yeah an honest input mm -hmm. what do you think what does this, that sound like it makes sense it does yeah i was yeah that's what i was um hoping to get at where at what point do i rely on what i have and then bring it to people that i am friends with and then have them look at it or mm -hmm. i don't want to be ask, ask yourself like you ask yourself i mean not in a weird way but like what is drawing you to this story yeah you know and i'm not saying like it, it, you know question it just i mean every I mean, for me every story i'm drawn to i go why am i telling this you know i mean everything you know even if the people are like me again that's a whole conversation that we can get into um, i think some people who might identify as something fill in the blank fill in the boxes 
are much more expansive in the way that they exist in the world than other people. That's because that's a that's a skill. Really, really good writers have the skill to, I would say, leave, you know, really good artists have the skill to leave their, you know, their day-to-day -day person and tra tra travel around in the bodies of other people, which doesn't mean they shouldn't do research or all that, but they have that skill. Um, and other people less so, because you right. spend more time in it, you know? So. Yeah. I would say do some research and, and have the conversations be simple. Maybe if you have friends who are of that culture, gentle conversations, you know, short, you know, small conversations. You don't have to lay it all on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, go, go slow, go <laughs> gentle. Admit that you don't know more than, even if you do, even if you know more about their culture than they do, <gasps> because you've been reading about it for a while, maybe, you know, you know, talk, <laughs> hey, I don't know about that. Talk to me about that. I'm not sure, you know? Yeah. Humility goes a long way. Even if, you know, humility always, every day, every day humility goes a long way. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah. But you have the right to write what you want to write. So write it. Okay. I will. Thanks. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much, Marianne. Caitlin, please unmute yourself to ask a question. Hey, Caitlin. Hi. Guys, my question is: um, Can you share some specific examples of like tools you use to organize your ideas, like lay them out? I'm kind of tired of a big stack of index cards. Mm -hmm. You did you say you're tired of index cards? Yes, they're being they're becoming very hard for me to like correct, and I just need a new. Oh, you need a new? Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, there's so many ways to write me. So index, so you, because you don't like, you don't like index cards. Do you, what, how do you corral them? Like you got too many damn index cards. I do. I um, am yeah. always traveling badly. I have, I like, have been, these are my plot points and my, um, my different dialogue pieces. This is just like half of an episode. Like this is like, this is 30 minutes of content right here. And I would like to hear about some other ways people organize all of their ideas. I mean, you have so many characters talking to you and plot points you want to bring in. Like, where, yeah, where do you only, think you're Yeah, at? Caitlin, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> I mean, the more, I mean, like I said, you know, look, here we go. No, I'm just see if I can go there. I mean, look at all those books behind me. Look at all the, ah, all this piles of shit. You know, I mean, all these books, all these papers, look, there are all these things there and you write music and there's all these notebooks and every, I mean, you just, you, you're okay. Just be okay with it. You got a baggie. A, what is that? A gallon size Ziploc bag? Yes. Um, I'm not sure about the measurements, but. Okay. It looks to me at a glance, a gallon size Ziploc bag, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, well, what what I'm saying is I, I'm I'm saying um, there are many ways to organize your stuff. You can put it in notebooks. You can have files on a computer. You know that's great. You can have there are uh, there are whole programs. You can spend good money investing in programs that help you organize your things. Um, and ah. yeah, and I want you to instead of going spending some money, you know, on something else realize that in my experience, I mean, to be a writer and someone who has a lot of projects going at one time, mm -hmm. I have a lot of uh, inboxes, actual bins. Can't, you know, I have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 bins, about 30 notebooks, all those bins down there filled with music, a music stand, a pile right here, So you're doing great. That exactly. Ziploc baggie is a great idea. You get a clip. Look, here's a clip. You clip your index cards. Here's another clip for a movie. Here's a, here's a whole bin right here. Oh, God, it's heavy. I can't even pick it up. It, oh, there. That's a book I'm working on, but not today. Okay? Index cards are great. Computer programs are great. 
You can have files on your computer for everything. You can get fancy programs, but I would suggest that you just like content yourself, embrace the fact that you're a writer and we walk around with bags of Ziploc baggies with paper. We'll see you with that. That's a beautiful thing. I'm so proud of you. I love you seeing your Ziploc baggie. I'm so excited. Thank you, SLP. You're welcome, darling. I don't want you to spend money. Look at me neither. You know, um, there's so many great pro like uh, there's a, something called a noteworthy. There's writerly. There's 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 hundreds of program. There's there's something called look remarkable. This is great. You can write all your notes in it, and you close the notebook, and then you forget where they are. I that's what I'm saying. Uh, index cards are great. Old school analog. Did you hear somewhere I was reading about Thank music? You. I read a lot about music. Analog. Uh, back when they were starting to make CDs and going digital, they were really pushing digital recording on musicians, convincing them that this was the shit. And yeah, it is the shit. And yet, what is it? Ten percent, fifteen percent of stuff recorded digitally has crashed, and it's not retrievable anymore. And yet stuff put on tape years ago still is. So I love my all my technology. I got about 100 devices. I got all my shit out here. And still, you know, paper is cool. I don't get a cut of that. I should get a cut from the paper lobby or something. Hmm. But also, if anybody has any ideas for Caitlin about other things, ways she can organize her fabulous work you can put it in the chat that'd be cool because it would be great to share ideas all right thank you so much caitlin kayla please unmute yourself to ask your question hey slp hey everyone um Another beautiful background, Kayla. <laughs> Thanks. I think this one's John Coltrane. Oh, right on. Um, so I, this play that I've been working on recently, I've I've gone back to working on the the character description. Mm -hmm. Um, my question is when you're when you're writing character descriptions for the play. Mm -hmm. it, is it for you? Is it for the actors? Is it for the director? Like, what's the like? Is there like a sense of like priority of like who the audience is for the character description? Hmm. Hmm. Um. That's a great question. I've never thought of really of it. Um. I would say it's for you initially, and if you need to write a lot of you know a paragraph or two or a page or two about your character, that's cool there's a there's several layers of character description there's a character description that you're going to write to remind yourself of who they are right you know gina she's the tall one and francine she's the taller one or whatever right okay right yeah. so there's a little there's stuff you got to write down to keep your characters organized in your mind you can write them down on index cards or i don't know what, <laughs> okay but you write them down okay and then there's the um, character description that you're going to write down when your play, when you finish writing your play, you know, Gina, 35 years old, you know, Mar Marcy, 27, like that, you mm -hmm. know, a teacher, a, a lawyer, whatever. And then there's a different character description called a breakdown. When you cast your play, you send a little blurb of maybe three or four sentences to the casting director giving the casting director a sense of who they're looking for. So there are different times you write different character descriptions. Okay. Um, I would say write what you need for you while you're writing the play. Mm -hmm. And then you might need, you might feel that yeah, I got it all in the play. I can cut back, you know? Okay. Yeah. But it's fun, oh. it's fun to think about that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher your name. Jing Q? Jing Chiu. Jing Chiu. Please uh, ask your question. Thank you. Thank you. Are you still a choreographer? Yes. <laughs> ha! <laughs> How's it going? It's going well. I'm preparing for a concert in LA next May. Um, I'm planning it. Normally, I have rehearsal on Monday, so I haven't been able to come. But today, I'm so happy I get to come. Um, so I have two questions. Yeah. One is on self working with self imposed deadlines, especially for longer term project. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm curious in your process how you work with those deadlines, the milestones that you set for yourself. How flexible are you with them? Do you intentionally delay decision making in order to allow more time for creative ideas or creative experimentation? Um, so that's one question. The second one is uh, okay. switching between projects, because I know you work on many different projects, music, writing books, you know, and so I found myself oftentimes have a hard time making the switch within one week. So I work better if I just focus on one project um, so I can deep, delve deep into it. But if I switch, I feel there's a break of momentum, but many times I have to switch because of different deadlines and um, that I have to adhere to. So I would love to learn about the strategy strategy of switching while still maximizing flow. Oh, wow. Those are two fantastic questions. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the self-imposed, and I love how you use the word milestones or finish lines, because right? Because if we use the word deadline, then it's like dead, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, dead isn't bad. It's just like, we want, I want to cross the finish line mm -hmm. living, right? Okay. Um, so these self-imposed finish lines, and do we do we move the goalposts or do we organize the goalposts so that we can maximize creativity? So I, unless it's like a, a deadline or a deadline, see, I even use the word, a, a finish line for a publication, right? I know that, or, or a, but even a, even a film, you have post, you have post production where you go into the editing room and you can edit. So there's even that. So a finish line for a, 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 a script is usually flexible in ways that we forget. Meaning when I show up and let's say with a play, I show up at rehearsal or dance piece, I show up, I have my dancers assemble, right? I, I have an idea of what I'm doing. And yet we it grows and changes after we begin to work together. Is that how it works when you when you work on a, a piece of your choreography? Mm -hmm. Yeah, similarly. So so I would I would say I'm pretty I like to be firm with my finish lines mm -hmm. when there are people who uh, I'm working with because so many things depend they're very dependent on getting the work at a certain time. Mm -hmm. You know um, for example a theater might need to to uh, schedule a reading or uh, a, a, a casting director for a film might need to see who we, we, we need, you know, or they might need to create the budgets very often, you know, and attract producers and things like that. So I'm fairly firm. Um, but at the same time, I give myself a lot of grace. Mm. So I don't just say like, I'm going to be done tomorrow, just because it would be great to be done tomorrow. <laughs> I said, I think I said that a couple of days ago. I'm writing a screenplay. I'm going to be done on a Monday afternoon before Watch Me Work. Ha! You know, because I just wanted to be finished. But ha ha ha! I'm not. So um, you know, so you're kind to yourself, mm -hmm. and you're, you're compassionate to yourself, and you say, okay, well, you reach Monday afternoon before Watch Me Work, and hmm, I'm not finished. Am I going to be angry at myself? No, I'm going to go. Well, okay, you know, let's look at the calendar. Let's see what I can do. Give myself some more time. Um, I tend, and then you have to also know yourself. And you have to say, am I going to become more creative if I have more time? Usually, not, that's not my situation. Usually, I got, I just got to drop into it and do it. You know, so there's, 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 there's that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a it's such a huge question. We should keep talking about this like forever. Uh, but in the meantime, you, your other um, your other question is, and I've forgotten it. A uh, switching between tasks or projects. Yeah. There it is, switching between projects. And I just forgot. I was so immersed in talking about what we we're talking about that I forgot the other thing that we were supposed to do. That's yeah. That that's if you have to. 
I should, I would say develop the skill. Mm. And again, be gentle with yourself. Don't expect, you know, you're amazing on both every single day. Also, you can do a lot of work on one, like, like I'm doing this, this is the day, right? Say from, you know, five in the morning till three in the afternoon on one project. And then maybe do like 30 minutes on another project. That's all. Mm. Yeah. Touch it. Hi, how are you? Like that. That's sometimes I do that when I'm doing music. I can, I do that. Um, so I would say, keep trying, but if it really feels awful when you're switching back and forth, just then just organize your calendar so that you do get both projects done, finished by the time. And you're doing one week on one project, another week on another, or three days and three days or four days and four days. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This, this, I, I don't know. That didn't sound helpful. It's just like you got, you, you seem like you do such great work and you're so committed to your work. Um, it can be done. The, the switching, you, you can learn how to switch. You can yeah. learn. I love the idea of saying hi <laughs> for 30 minutes. Yeah. Just, I, I really do. When I, I had to write a song for somebody's party last week and it was like, oh my God, I would just touch on it for mm -hmm. 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes, just touch on it. Every single day I touched on for 20 minutes and by the finish line, I had the song and I was able to perform it on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it just kind of came together. Yeah. Just touch it. Just say, hi, hi friend. That's right. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Thanks for visiting again. So good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you to uh, Crystal. Please uh, unmute and ask your question. Hey. Hi. Are you in How the yeah, I'm parked. I'm parked. I'm not driving. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for my son. So um, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you, sis. Good to see you, too. So good to see you. Um, so I got asked on to a project um, and uh, like a commission to what became like a co-writing process mm. for um, a one woman show um, uh an adaptation in the form of a one woman show of an old Japanese film. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. I'm very, very passionate about it. Very passionate about it. And, um, I kind of started like writing, 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 but then the, the vision, uh, or the perspective, cause it, it's about different perspectives kind of changed. And so now I kind of feel a little bit like, um, I'm how do I approach it being that I'm not the one doing the I'm not the actress I'm I'm the co-writer right and so hearing the voice and and like writing feels like a little bit more of a challenge than when I was just doing it myself um, wow. because it's not it's, it's it's for someone else and it's a one person show and she's writing as well and so I guess my question is like, you know, in the process of collaborating, um, you know, does my approach to hearing the voice or hearing what I see have like as much weight as say the person who's doing it? Um, like, or is it kind of like a, more like a fall in line with, uh, their version, their vision, and kind of trying to um make make that happen. Right. Ooh, can of worms. No, <laughs> I mean we love worms. <laughs> they're worms, good for fishing. Wor worms are good for fishing, and they're good <laughs> for just the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Can of worms that are good for the earth that help us figure out things and keep going. Um. Oh, girl. Yeah. But I was going to ask, like, so the other writer, so you're doing a, a commission that's a, you're writing with a partner or with, with another person mm -hmm. and that, and it's a one moment show and that other person is the actor. Yes. Right. That's tricky. Um, is it Rashomon? You're not doing Rashomon, are you? Yeah. Okay. okay. The, the Kurosawa film from four perspectives right right yes i don't know well i know like, I, know. I, I know, know two things i know two things that's one of them 
<laughs> and, that, and after that, so after this, I'm just going to be vamping and making up shit. Um, <laughs> um, hmm. Hey, hmm. Ah, uh, it sounds like a great project. It is. And mm -hmm. there, 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 there's like two answers. <laughs> okay. And you can do both. You don't, okay. have to you don't have to choose. You can choose to do both or choose to do one. Okay. Um, so because the other writer is the actor, I would say the first possibility is fall in line, fall in line. I would want to, I would want to do two things. I would want to serve her process. Did she bring you on or did someone else, a third person bring you on? The director brought me on. Can of worms. <laughs> okay. I would, I would, I would make, I would get in line with the director and the writer and I would, I, I'm for me, this is just me. I would do my best to create a project that serves what the director and writer are hoping for. They, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing they brought you on because not only do they love your writing, but they know that you can write. Huh? You know what I mean? And the yeah. right, the actor might be having some difficulty writing, just creating a something that's going to hold. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and they need you. She, you said actors. They need you to be there to help them hold it. You know what I mean? Right. And 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 make it exciting and gorgeous and beautiful. But I would, I, I would. Sounds weird, but I would defer to the actress and the director. Mm -hmm. That's one answer. Okay. Okay. And I want and? to stress this and, and because it's Kurosawa's Rashomon, you can also write your own. Yeah. You can do both. So you're on fire doing your own thing, right? Yeah. You send the director say, or the actress says, I'm kind of wanting this. You can serve her and do what she needs. And, and and provide a beautiful script for her one woman show and it's going to be awesome. And you can write the thing that you're hearing as well. Ah. Uh, okay. You're you're you can do that. Okay. Okay. But yeah. I, I really think that it, it's you know I get work for hires a lot. I work for you know fancy famous people who pay me good money to and I just I'm very I pay attention and if they say you know, I'd like to, you know, blah, 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 have a scene, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, I hear you. And I, I am in, my talent is, is in service of your talent. And that's the deal. And I, this, it's no, you know, it's nothing bad. I actually enjoy it. I actually enjoy it. I actually enjoy helping people be who they want to be. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a, a, it's a magical superpower and, and not everybody can do it. And we who write, and create can do that for people it's fun i see yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Cool project. Both oh, so your cool. own version and the version you write for her it's gonna be great that i can do that yeah i can do that <laughs> thank you thank you great question thanks you're always surprising look at you i try yeah, what is your son? Is he? Is he? Uh, oh, he's right here. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, you've grown. Well, good. <laughs> you've grown. Look at you. Dang. All right. Sasha, please unmute and ask your, your question. Hi, I had a, um, a follow-up question I wanted to ask to Crystal's question that just popped into my head, um, which is just um, SLP, um, nice to see you. Um, <laughs> do you have any sort of like safeguards that you try to keep in place? Cause this kind of just came up for me too. Um, someone who's not a writer, wants my help to write their story mm -hmm. and um I 
am, you know, I have my own work that I'm, you know, my own buckets, you know, my own chaos in my own head and my own apartment. Uh -huh. Um, and like others here. And, um, do you have any safeguards that you like to keep in place so you can kind of like, um, help someone else, help someone with, with their, but also not let it like kind of take too much from your own mm -hmm. well, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Great question, Sasha. Great question. Look, a timer. Aha. So if you're working with somebody and hopefully they're somehow compensating you. Yes. Hopefully. Just, just, just saying, you know, whether it's there, it's bartering or they're paying you or whatever, whatever, whatever you have an agree. So you get that agreement, right? You get down, you have an understanding of what it's going to mean when it's finished. Like, will it be yours and theirs? Will it be theirs? Are you writing it for hire? Just belongs to them. Just get that, those conversations out of the way. It's like, it's like a prenup, you know what I mean? Just, you know, and it can be lighthearted and loving. Okay. Yep. Then if you want to make sure that they're not going to like, you know, consume you, I'm just, you know, you get a timer and you say, okay, you know, um, let's meet whatever on zoom, for example, I'm just making this up, on zoom, you know, every Wednesday from 12 to one and I'll work with you. An hour. Yeah. One hour is kind of what I was thinking. It seems like not a lot of time, but I like that we had the same thoughts. So I'm going to one hour. You can do it more than once a week. You know, do it at a time that's good for you and, and good for them. Find it, you know, you know, don't be, don't be getting meeting at times that are not good for you. Okay. Like, love yourself enough. I have some people who call me, they're like, SLP, let's have a breakfast meeting. And I'm like, no, like, <laughs> oh, we know. Cause you don't get up until I say, I get up at four in the morning, but I don't talk to you until afternoon Yeah, yeah. because it's my time. I mean, it's my time and my sons and my husband, you know, it's my family time and my, and my character's time, you know? So we just be mindful of that. Some people don't want to talk to you after dinner, you know, whatever it's, it's special. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you, you piece out the time. You can meet them an hour at a time, maybe more than once a week. Just try it out. See, you know, start small. You can always grow. Yeah. A couple of times a week, I find better than like, let's meet for five hours on Wednesday. You know, I get brain fatigue and I get just, I get tired. I mean, I, I can't be listening to you for longer than an hour. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but uh, different people are different. Um, and then, so you, you kind of piece it out. I, I mean, this is good. I like Zoom. That's my personal. I like Zoom. People are like, let's meet for coffee. And I'm like, no, I'm going to meet you on Zoom. Because at the end of your meeting, you close the computer and you're, in, you're back in your world. It helps to set boundaries. You know, I'm not talking about friends or your child. You know, I'm not telling my child, let's meet on Zoom. You know what I'm saying? I'm, but I'm saying with your with work things, sometimes it's helpful to have a little bit of bound, just boundaries. Especially if you are a what do you call it? A porous individual who yeah. superpowers to walk around in other people's spirits. Yeah, kind of like knowing where you end and they begin, you know, it's it can be tough. So I appreciate the advice. Yeah, it can, it, can, it can be tough. And it's also it's it's also like really, you know, you just don't want to be you, know, you want it. You want to have your thing, which is great, which is very exciting. Does that help? Like. Yeah, very much. My only other concern is about working with somebody who's not a uh, creative. I'm just a little scared because I've been burnt, you know, because I used to not. I used to be um, like a teacher. And mm -hmm. and so I was in the real world. All the, I was lived in reality all the time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now I get to like not live in reality, which is really nice. Um, I'm a little scared to, to spend a lot of time with like a normal person. And, um, well, I, how, well I think I, then I would really say, do they have the capability for a zoom thing? I think so. I think we'll try to meet in person because I think they're, they know my neighbor and that's how we kind of got set up. Um, but I would like to switch to zoom because it's easier for me. Like so yeah. if you're. Sasha, you just said like I'm scared. <laughs> I mean, or I uh, did I I'm hear you scared. right? You have you have. I mean, that's not bad. It's a great thing. Like 
I'm feeling that I need to protect my space. This is not saying that the other person is bad, wrong, weird, or anything. No. But I'm hearing you, and I suggest you just do Zoom mm. for a little while. Mm -hmm. Just Zoom. Okay. Love you that much. We just want you to feel like, it, especially because you used to be a teacher, and now, and and you, it, there, there is a lot of energy. Yeah. From, uh. You, you know, from, from people who, who need your writing expertise, who, who want to learn how to write and all that. You just, you just need to, Zoom is great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for actually Zoom, you can give them more time. You can give them a full hour in Zoom. Mm. In person, you got to travel, you got to order coffee. It's a lot, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And when you feel those feelings of that, say, like, I'm scared or I'm nervous about this, honor that. That's your gut talking to you. I'm here to amplify that voice mm -hmm. and just remind you that you said that, mm -hmm. you know, and that's cool. It's cool. And then you can be successful and they can be successful. You can set yourself up for success. Right on. Right on. Thank you. What a great question. Thank you. It's 5.59. I want to read. Look, I, while I was reading, see, I, I couldn't get on my other screen without clicking off the Zoom. So I was forced, oh my God, to read a book. Look, it says, it's Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic. No, you do not have thousands of years to live. Urgency is on you. While you live, while you can, become good. I like read that. I was like, yes. While you live, while you can, become good. So are we back next week, Zoe? You betcha. Hell, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, we're back next week. Yeah. So... Yeah. See you all, same time, same place, next week. 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 Love you. Hey, bye-bye. Thank you. Have a great week.